Here's a problem where we're going to list four numbers from smallest to largest. The four numbers are 7 sixteenths, 5 ninths, 0.55 or 55 one hundredths, and 5.5 with a bar above the second five. That means 5.55555 repeating on and on. Now, one thing we got to think about here is that we have fractions and decimals mixed together in the same problem. We'll probably want to write all these numbers the same way in the end. Since I already have some decimals, I think I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my fractions as decimals. Now, Another thing I'd like you to think about here is when we take a look at the numbers that are involved, notice that 7 sixteenths, 5 ninths, and 0.55, these are all less than 1. Less than 1 whole. When a fraction has a smaller number on top than below, we know the fraction's less than 1 whole. That's true for 7 sixteenths and 5 ninths. Our decimal, 0.55, which is the same as 0 0.55, has zero whole number part, so it's a decimal less than one whole. But the 5.5 with the bar is more than one. And that means that number, 5.5 with the bar, has to be larger than the other three. We know that one's the largest already. We just need to compare 7 sixteenths, 5 ninths, and 0.55. So let's go ahead and convert 7 sixteenths to a decimal, and we'll also convert 5 ninths to a decimal before we proceed. So let's go ahead and convert 7 sixteenths to a decimal. Now, the fraction, 7 sixteenths, can be written as a division problem. We're going to do decimal long division here. The division problem that we get is 7 divided by 16. When we convert a fraction to a decimal, the numerator, the number on top in the fraction, always goes inside in the long division box. Now, 16 doesn't go into the whole number 7. In fact, that just illustrates the fact that 7 sixteenths is less than one whole. In order to continue with the division here, we need to place a decimal point to the right of the 7. The decimal point will go right above that in our answer. Then we can add a 0, and we can now think of this as 70 inside the long division box. And we're thinking about how many times does 16 go into 70? Uh, let's make a guess here. Maybe, what's 16 times 4? 16 times 4 is 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 1 is 4. Add 2, that's 64. I think I'm pretty close. 16 times 5 will be too big, right? 16 times 5. 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 3 is 8. That would be 80. 80 is too big. 64 is less than 70. So 4, I can write up above. 4 times 16 is 64 and I'm ready to subtract. 70 minus 64 is 6. Notice that I wrote the 4 to the right of the decimal point up above. That's because I want to write that 4 right above the digit that I'm, that's at the right hand of the number where I'm subtracting. Now I can add another 0, bring it down. 16 goes into 60 how many times? Well, 4 is too large. 5 is way too large. Let's try 16 times 3. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. Uh, I think I have to use 3 times. 48 is less than 60. And I know 4 times would be too much. So 
3 times 16 is 48. Subtract. Here I can borrow. 6 becomes 5. 10 minus 8 is 2. 5 minus 4 is 1. Add another 0. Bring it down. Now I want to know how many times does 16 go into 120. Uh, I know it's got to be quite a bit more than any of the ones I figured out so far, more than 4 or 5. Let's try 16 times 8. 6 times 8 is 48. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is 12. 128, oh, that's a little bit too big, so I have to try 7. 16 times 7. 6 times 7 is 42. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 4 is 11. I get 112. It's going to be 7 times. 7 times 16 is 112. 120 minus 112. 120 minus 112. If I borrow, 2 becomes 1. 10 minus 2 is 8. And now I can add on another 0. Bring it down. 16 goes into 80 how many times? Let's see. I have here 16 times 5 in our work so far. So I know 16 goes into 80 5 times. 5 times 16 is 80. And when I subtract, I get 0. And because I got 0 remainder, here's our decimal for 7 sixteenths, 0.4375. Now let's convert 5 ninths to decimal form. 5 ninths can be written as a division problem. 5, the number on top, divided by 9, the number below. 5 goes inside the long division box. 9 goes outside. Always the number on top goes inside the long division box. Now let's see what we can say here. Nine doesn't go into 5 as a whole number, so we can add a decimal point, write the decimal point above for our answer, and add a 0. Think of this temporarily as 50. How many times does 9 go into 50? Well, 9 times 5 is 45, so 5 times 9 is 45. Subtract. 50 minus 45 is 5. Now I can continue by adding a 0 inside the long division box, bringing it down, and I ask myself again, how many times does 9 go into 50? 9 goes into 50 uh, 5 times. 5 times 9 is 45. Subtract 50 minus 45 is 5. Now I can see now that my decimal's repeating. I'm getting 0.55. If I add another 0 and bring it down, I'm just going to get 9 going into 50 again 5 times, another 5. 5 times 9 is 45. And this process will go on forever. My decimal that I'm getting for 5 ninths is the repeating decimal, 0.555, I'll write dot, 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 to represent the fact that that decimal continues. Or you can also use the notation where we write 0.5 bar, where we write that little line on top of the 5 to represent the repeating decimal. Now that we have a decimal form for our two fractions, let's go ahead and compare all four decimals. I want to write the decimals for these numbers with the decimal points lined up. That way I can compare the corresponding place values. 7 sixteenths is equal to 0.4375. 5 ninths is equal to 0.5 repeating. I'm going to write 
five, five. I'll write several of these fives. Five, five, and then dot, dot, dot. Point five, five is equal to point five, five. Now, that decimal terminates, but I can write zeros on the end here without changing the value. 0 0.5500 has the same value as 0.55. And finally, let's also indicate our 5.5 bar. That's 5 point, because of the bar notation, I know that's 5, 5, repeating again here, 5, 5, I'll write several 5's, dot, dot, dot. Now, 5.5 bar is the only one of these four numbers that has a whole number part of 5. We already know that one is the largest of the four. The other three numbers we've observed are less than one whole. Their whole number parts are 0. We could write a 0 in front of the decimal point of each one. It's not required. It's optional. Let's see. So we already know 5.5 bar is the largest of these. Next, we're going to compare the first three. The first three all have zero whole number part. Let's move to the first decimal place to the right of the decimal point. That's the tenths place. 7 sixteenths has a four in that position while 5 ninths and 0.55 both have fives. Because 4 is smaller than 5, we know 7 sixteenths has to be smaller than these other two numbers. It doesn't matter what numbers are written to the right of that tenths place. Because 4 is less than 5, we know 7 sixteenths is the smallest. That's the smallest of all four. Now we just need to compare 5 ninths and 0.55. They're going somewhere in between, in the middle, between the smallest and the largest. To compare these two, we move one place over. Let's look at the 100ths place. Now both 5 ninths and 0.55 have a 5 in that position. So from the 100ths place, we can't tell which of these two is larger. We need to move one more place over to the 1,000ths place. 5 ninths has a 5 in that position, while 0.55 has a 0. Since 0 is less than 5, we know that 0.55 is smaller than 5 ninths. So we know that. Uh, this one will be the second smallest of all. 7 sixteenths is the smallest. That will go first. 5.5 bar is the largest. That will go fourth. Next will come the 0.55. That's second because 0.55 is smaller than 5 ninths. That goes third. Now let's go write our original numbers in order, smallest to largest. We know 7 sixteenths comes first, 0.55 comes next, then third is 5 ninths, and finally fourth comes 5.5 bar. There we have all four numbers in order from smallest to largest.